Hello, this is Jim McKeith, and I'm online today with Detlef Overbeek from Blaise Pascal Magazine. Thanks for joining me, Detlef. Sorry, I can Th hear you. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. So we're going to go through real quick the latest issue issue 53 of blaze pascal magazine now it the magazine's released 10 times there's 10 issues a year so this was released yeah. just here just in july but it's not the july issue or is it the july issue how does that work uh well usually i try to calm down in the summer because it's a lot of work to uh, get it each month done okay but uh, that gives me uh some some little holiday uh, in the summertime and preparation for what is coming uh, in in September because that's the period that is very very busy so now so uh, this is number 5 uh, and uh, the next issue will be available in August which is number 6 and then we start in September again with number 7 Okay, all right. Now, Blaise Pascal is available in English. Um, all, are they also in available Dutch. in Dutch? Now, are you working on a Portuguese yeah. edition as well? Uh, no. Uh, we are making a English version, but we have a special uh, uh, pages for Brazil. Okay. And it's not done in Portuguese because uh, that is very, very hard to do. Um, you need very, uh, very much help with it. I'm, I'm not speaking any Portuguese, and uh, usually I want to say something that I do understand. Yeah. Okay. So the people <laughs> could visit uh, blazepascal.eu, and they can. Uh, buy this issue by itself or they can subscribe in both physical and digital format and then you also have a full library where they can download all your past issues so yeah we started about 10 years ago and that was uh, of course issue number one uh, uh, if you want to hear a short story about the history uh, we were a dutch user group and uh, uh, actually, it was uh, the last magazines uh, vanished in that time, and I tried to uh, to make contact with them, but they stopped it. And then we we decided to do an English version of the Dutch version, and we started all with uh, black and white stuff and, and very smaller, and only four times a year. But uh, I wanted to uh, let it grow to um, somewhat more uh, professional magazine. And uh, it's always very difficult to keep the balance between beginners and uh, people that are more uh, engaged with uh, Pascal. Yeah. That's about it. Okay. Yeah, it's great. I, I agree. That is one of the things that's tough is you always want to have the the more technical content, but then it's uh, hard to balance that because you, you're right. You want to make it accessible to new people as well. So this issue has a pretty cool feature. Especially, I think. Uh, so this issue has a pretty cool feature. Yeah. Oh, we're getting some feedback there, I guess. Oh, we're getting some feedback there, I guess. So I was going to say that this issue so opened with an interview. Open with an interview with Atnas Popov, our general manager here for Embarcadero, which is kind of uh, kind of cool actually to hear what he's got in mind and some of his thoughts about um, where we're going and what's going on. Yeah, we talked a lot uh, that afternoon uh, because there were many questions for the future, etc. And I wanted to know his visions. And uh, I think we uh, 
we we were able to uh, get answers to most of uh, what we wanted to know and of course uh, we can't uh, look into the future but uh, uh, I think at, at short time we now do understand what's going on and uh, how it will be uh, uh, done in the future. I think there have been some major changes in the company um, and I think people can uh, read that in the interview uh, very clearly what is going on what's different etc yeah there there has been a lot of changes and a lot of people um, internally and externally both you know change can be a little unsettling but I I th I think I'm starting to see some of the vision of where we're headed. And actually, I think this article was did a good job of highlighting a lot of that as well. But I'm excited for a lot of stuff that's coming down the pipe. And I, I love some of the pull quotes you had here about, for example, Linux is something we have coming up here quite soon that is going to be yeah. exciting. exciting. Yeah, I think uh, that will be a major step for Delphi, very much. Because uh, it always has been an issue... Uh, about um, being able to, to uh, create a Delphi server on Linux, it's sheer impossible. Now you, nowadays you would have to do that in uh, Pascal, in, in Lazarus or something like that. And in the future you can straight, straight away do that uh, in Delphi. And I think that's a very good uh, uh, next step. Yeah. The uh, we're doing yeah. a promotion around the C plus plus starter edition right now, where you get the uh, starter edition for free, and we have a boot camp coming up. And so, as, as you mentioned here, we have a uh, idea to do the same sort of thing around Delphi in September. So that's exciting as well. People are always talking about wanting to see a, a free version of Delphi. So that's something that people can look forward to in September. Yeah. Um. Well, I must see, of course, that uh, I will remind Atanas to uh, to let it become true. But uh, I think that's a very good uh, change in in uh, uh, for the future because we will be able to uh, help younger people to a free uh, um, uh, version of uh, Delphi, and I think that's something we needed since a long long time yeah so it, it, we'll figure out exactly what that's going to look like going forward in the future but it, it's certainly something i'm excited about too uh to see a more accessible version of delphi and uh also we, got, we have a lot of work going on, on around um educational program uh, reaching out to uh universities and and schools to provide educational copies as well. So that's that's something that's been a big uh, push and big effort around that, just trying to find the right way to make this all work. So uh, it may not be where we want it yet, and it may not be there in the near future, but it's certainly something we're looking to uh, get better around. Yeah, well, actually, myself uh, and working on that field, uh, we are doing the uh, Delphi Pascal um, uh, um, what's it called? Just a moment. Uh, sorry for that. Sorry. Uh, I I just need to look it up. Um, ah, Delphi Pascal Academy. Oh That's wow! What it is. And the Delphi Pascal Academy will be available for, of course, anyone. But in special occasions, uh, people can get uh, uh, the academic versions if they become a member of that uh, academy. And we will try to make, especially for beginners, uh, to make a lot of things very easy, available, etc. And it's not only for Holland, but it will also be for let's say, uh, all English-spoken uh, languages or countries. Very nice. 
So one thing I found is that it, uh, it was really about the time we had the uh, was XE5 rolled out with uh, Android support is we kind of saw a huge influx of people moving to Delphi or coming back to Delphi and uh, bringing on new new programmers and stuff. So I think it's a great, more important than ever to have the um, stuff for people wanting to learn Delphi at this point because it's just there's so many new people coming on to, to use it. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I concentrated on because I think uh, a lot of uh, people would like to start with it, but there is hardly any uh, material to find uh, to make it easy for people to begin. And so I thought, uh, let's write some articles about that. We'll do that in the, f in the future as well. And I try to be documented as uh, good as possible. And they can, of course, if they're a reader, they can have the uh, coder that is necessary for uh, making applications, etc. Uh, in the next version, I'll try to do uh, uh, something about making connection to a database from uh, uh, the design we already made. So that would be the next step uh, in the last uh, version, which is in issue number 53. You can uh, do an application with XML, and the next step will be doing it with a database. Wow, very cool. Very cool. So uh, this is kind of exciting coming up in September you have the PassCon Del and Delphi Festival in uh, is this it in the Netherlands or Norway or no no <laughs> it's in ne Netherlands Netherlands it's okay in New okay. New uh, which is very close to Utrecht and we um, we're quite experienced with it because we uh, work a long time together with Barnson and uh, we always try uh, to find new good locations, etc. It should be uh, very professional uh, looking as well as be very relaxed, uh, uh, how to say that, summit. And... Um, we, we have a lot of extras there. Uh, as a special thing, um, there will be a Mr. Anthony Vogelar, which will show his, um, uh, the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, he created a hardware console and wrote, especially for that, in Delphi uh, components to um, make the uh, console applicable to this uh, uh, um, flight simulator. And you can try it out there, so you can start flying. And it's not only for, for uh, just for fun, it's uh, also for uh, professional uh, people. So there are two versions like that. Wow. I always try to put some extras in and, and find uh, good new stuff. We, we have quite a lot of uh, very exciting stuff over there. That sounds really cool. Um, cool. I think uh, next week uh, we will... Uh, uh, have our website ready with all the program and people can look at it. Okay, so they can just go to the blazepascal.eu to find out more about about this conference. Yeah, absolutely. Or Barnson. Or Barnson. They will have the same pro program as well. Okay. There is one thing okay. special. If you're a reader of Delphi, uh, Delphi magazine, you will uh, have a reduction on the price, which is very interesting. Uh, if you're a Blazer Pascal magazine reader, you will have something like uh, 45 euros um, uh, reduction of the price. So you'll only pay 54 euros. Excellent. Instead of 99. 
Excellent. Well, that's great. Yeah. So everybody can uh, get their subscriptions now and get the discount for the, the festival, the summit. Yeah. Yeah. I've always had an interest in artificial intelligence, AI, and so I was pretty excited actually to see that you had a whole article here on creating and training neural networks. That's really cool stuff. For some reason at this point, I lost debt left audio, so I'm going to edit this out to uh, just have my part of the conversation. Ah, very cool. Yeah, Boy, I've always, Boyan always has some of the coolest projects and components that he's working on. So, I, I, if I, so if someone was to say, "Hey, someone made a, a neural network component suite library," I would have my first guess would be, "Oh, it must have been Boyan." <laughs> I mean, that, he's always doing the cool stuff like this. So, this is neat. I was, uh, it reminds me of a, uh, I was talking to Eric from uh, Digifort that makes the uh, video surveillance software in Delphi. And he was saying, talking about all the, the stuff they do with facial recognition and stuff like that in the software that it can like tell you, hey, there's somebody loitering in the parking lot or this person's in the wrong spot. And all that happens with the facial recognition and stuff. So cool. So you had a, a, this cool looking ad for uh, Boyan's Mitoff software here. I just thought it would be cool to talk about it because we were just talking about how all the cool stuff he does with uh, uh, video editing and uh, uh, computer vision, uh, audio, and now artificial intelligence. Yes, as we know with his uh, Arduino stuff he's doing, which I remember actually we did the uh, Delphi week last year and he came online and announced this we know that was kind of as he unveiled it then. So that was kind of that's very cool. It's come a long way in just a year's time too. All the cool stuff, that's what Boyan's doing. So always got to check him out and see what he's got going there. We'll say two of the more innovative uh, component companies are uh, TMS and Mitov, Boyan and um, Bruno. And, I mean, there, there's lots of other great components out there, vendors out there that do some really cool stuff. But for really uh, outside-the-box type stuff, that just consistently are coming out with great new things, visionary things, exactly, would be uh, Boyan and Bruno. So your, another article in here is on creating Android packages and using the emulator. And I noticed in this one, you kind of went into some of the, the tips and details on how to get better performance out of the emulator to uh, make it more easy to use, make it actually useful, which I thought was a great thing to include there. And, and that's one of the things that a lot of people, when it, when it first came out with Android support, they're like, oh my goodness, the simulator's so slow. And it was slow, but there are some tips and tricks, which you highlight a lot of them here, to, to make it faster, yeah. Uh, emulator, and it actually does use uh, a separate GPU, which actually you talk about here in this article, is that, that how to set it up to use the GPU directly, and uh, which helps with, because Delphi is using the GPU as well. So, yeah, it does a lot to really boost the performance. So that's great to see. So a couple things real quick before we wrap up here. You have this great book you got your offering through Blaise Pascal, your website, uh, David's book on computer math and games in Pascal, which is just a lot of cool stuff in there. Uh, I remember actually a while ago I was thinking, oh, you know what would be cool is come up with a system for solving go and oh my goodness look at that david's got it in his book <laughs> it's like all the cool game stuff is in here yep all the all the great math stuff in there so you have this bundle right now where you can get the library which is all 50 what would it be 52 issues up to or would it include this one 53 oh 51 okay so yeah that, that's a great offer to check out and then also anybody that wants to be involved in your um, Blaze Pascal community can go to that URL there. The short URL is is.gd, and then it's lowercase bb, uppercase ux, uh, uppercase qt, and you can check out uh, that community there. And as we'll just end here with the uh, URL for your blazepascal.eu. So people can go there, check out your uh, subscriptions, get the subscription now so they can save money on the festival or maybe get the library and the book or uh, yeah, lots of options there to, to stay informed and stay updated on some of the cool stuff going on in the uh, Pascal world. Well, thank you so much for your time. Hopefully this goes over well and people get a lot of value out of this. And hopefully we'll be back next month with your next issue to talk more about uh, some of the cool stuff going on in the Pascal world.